Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today with joy we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary is familiar to most everybody, Catholic and non-Catholic alike. Even gang members often wear these rosaries around their neck for the wrong reason, but everybody knows what the rosary is. Not everybody understands its value and what it really is, which is a gift from God, the Most High, given to the Queen of Heaven, who then in turn gives it to us and asks us to use it to obtain for ourselves and for others the graces we need to realize our purpose. God created us not just Uh, as toys to wind up and let go, but for a purpose. And our purpose is to know him, to love him, to serve him in this life and to be happy with him forever in the next. And so the rosary is an instrument and a prayer and a source of grace when used uh, to appeal to God through Mary for those graces we need to be obedient to his will and to truly live the Christian life, which is a life of charity and self-sacrifice. So the rosary is a prayer as well as an object. The, I would have to try to dig under these vestments to pull mine out and show you, but you all know what it looks like. Its form is based on an ancient tradition used to represent the Psalter of David, the Psalms. But St. Louis de Montfort says it's even greater than that because the Psalms, in a certain sense, you could, he teaches, is a prefiguration of the Rosary. It's 150 prayers offered to God. And it's accessible, the Rosary, to even the simple. Not, you don't have to be a scholar. In the days that Our Lady gave it to St. Dominic, many people couldn't read, and only the clergy could recite the Psalter. But with the gift of the Rosary, then the power was given to all of God's children, even those who couldn't read the breviary and pray the Psalter. There's so much that could be said and has been said about the Holy Rosary. Uh, The date of this feast coincides with a victory at Lepanto, a great battle that was fought in 1571 uh, between the forces of Christendom and the invading Muslim Turks who were going to overthrow uh, Christianity and, and Europe if they won that battle. And they outnumbered the Christian forces and the Pope asked everybody to pray, and in an inexplicable turn of events, the overwhelming forces of the Ottoman Turks were defeated by the Christian forces, and uh, there's a famous painting showing Our Lady above this battle, directing it, and in the end what happened is kind of like what happened uh, in the story of Gideon. The small forces, aided by God, more or less, stood back and let the enemy destroy himself. And that's, in in a very uh, summary way, what happened. Not only was that one of the great battles won through the intercession of the Rosary, there are many. I'll conclude this way. Uh, Even in our day, the the popes continue to uh, promote the rosary as a means of prayer and sanctification. And our beloved late Holy Father, St. John Paul II, wrote an apostolic letter regarding the rosary just a year after the attack on the Twin Towers, which, by the way, coincides with the date of another great rosary victory, and some people speculate that the date 9-11 was chosen as a retaliation for 
uh, the battle at Vienna in 1683, when once again uh, a smaller Christian force was able to repel an overwhelming uh, Muslim invasion after praying the rosary and with the help of Jan Sobieski from Poland who came to fight for, for Europe. In any case, Pope John Paul II wrote an apostolic letter, a whole catechism on the rosary, and last week, a week ago, in my homily I mentioned the scriptural foundations of the rosary and how so much um, is ex exposed in the mysteries of the rosary that is all scriptural. And in this letter, it has a Latin name, Rosarium Virginis Mariae, which means the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, Pope John Paul II continues to show the scriptural basis, not only of the mysteries that the rosary uh, contains, but also in the very practice of going to Christ through Mary. And I'll just cite one paragraph of this. It's not even a full paragraph. Uh, number 16, entitled, Praying to Christ with Mary. Jesus invited us to turn to God with insistence and the confidence that we will be heard. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. From the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. The basis for this power of prayer is the goodness of the Father, but also the mediation of Christ himself. And he cites the Gospel of St. John, or excuse me, the first letter of St. John 2, 1. And the working of the Holy Spirit, who intercedes for us according to the will of God. See Romans 8, 26 through 27. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. Again, Romans 8, 26. And at times we are not heard because we ask wrongly. God, uh, the letter of St. James, chapter 4, verses 2 through 3. Just in this one introductory paragraph to one article of this letter, he cited the scriptures five times. There's all kinds of evident basis for Marian mediation. And Mary is not only the mother of Jesus Christ, but the spouse of the Holy Spirit, who came, as we heard in the gospel, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So very much a, uh, an image of the marital union, except the Holy Spirit is not a man, the Holy Spirit is God. But that union between the Holy Spirit and Mary was not just for a moment to bring about the conception of Jesus Christ. She is the spouse of the Holy Spirit forever. And so it's fitting and wise when we have a prayer of supplication to make it through Mary. And that's why Our Lady gave us the Holy Rosary. And she asks us to pray it. Insistently, she asks us to pray it at Fatima, at every apparition. Pray the Rosary every day. And up until the last century, Many families, many Christian families, prayed the rosary daily. Our founder, Father Stefano Minelli, uh, remembers when he was a child, and he told us this often in seminary, all the families prayed the rosary. It was just taken for granted, like going home and watching uh, the nightly news. That was before the days of nightly news, perhaps. But everybody prayed the rosary. And so if you think how many millions of families there were and how many people in each family, and all of them gathered together praying the rosary. What a powerful prayer was lifted up to heaven. And now, how many, how many families pray the rosary? How many families are there? Broken families everywhere. Just complete devastation. But Our Lady can fix all this, and that's why she has appeared. That's why she has continuously reminded us, use that tool that I gave you. Pray it. And 
this is a famous book on the rosary, The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. And uh, it can be obtained at low cost, I think from 10 publishers. This is a very old copy, but I'm sure they're still publishing it. And on the back cover, here's, uh, I'll close with a quote from Venerable Pius XII regarding the power of this rosary for healing the evils of our day. He said, we do not hesitate to affirm again publicly that we put great confidence in the Holy Rosary for healing the healing of evils which afflict our times. Pope Pius is not an oddball among popes in this belief. Every pope, uh, since Our Lady gave this rosary, practically has promoted it. And we do live in very dark times, but we've been promised, and Our Lady herself told us, that in the end her Immaculate Heart will triumph. And long before that she said, through the rosary and the scapular, I will one day save the world. So we have reason to hope. We have no reason to fear. Our Lady will, will save us. She will be the queen of victory once again if we just turn to her and cooperate with the grace and use this great gift that God has given to us through her. Praise be Jesus and Mary.